What's going on, guys? It's Jimmy here. Welcome to our daily show where we discuss everything you need to know about and what's happening here in our country on a daily basis. In this video, we got some big news here. We're going to be hearing from House Speaker Kevin McCarthy and some details on Republicans talking about cutting expenses and money from Social Security, Medicare, and also former President Donald Trump, who is the front runner for president for the Republican Party here. Details on that. Also, details on will your Social Security payments stop now that the debt ceiling has been reached? Um, I kind of covered this in the previous video, but I didn't cover all of it. I, I talked about it, but I want to cover some more details here on this because um, I breached the subject, but I didn't cover it all. So I'll give you the details here on that as well. So let's jump right in here. I'm your source for daily information and everything going on here in our country on a daily basis. If you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe down below to our YouTube channel. Just click the subscribe button and the bell icon so you don't miss out on new videos. It's completely free to do so. And also thanks so much for liking this video. Here we go. Uh, let me show you this video here from Kevin McCarthy, the leader of the Republicans in the House of Representatives, and also from um, this lady from Kaiser Permanente, one of the largest health providers in the United States, um, and what they have to say about cuts potentially coming to Medicare, Medicaid, and Social Security. Um, it'll be interesting, and I want to uh, know your thoughts here in the comments, so take a listen to this. We are back. Joining us now is Julie Robner. She's chief Washington correspondent for Kaiser Health News, here to talk to us this morning about Republicans' commitment to America and what they have said about Medicare and Social Security. Julie Robner, I want to start with the leader of the Republicans in the House, Kevin McCarthy. He recently uh, spoke about what they want to do on Medicare and Social Security. I'll have you come back and respond to it. Look, the one thing I know, I've watched... When Republicans were in power those eight years, discretionary spending increased zero. I watched Democrat take over for four years. They increased it by 30 percent. They went from $4 trillion to $7 trillion. I watched the $31 trillion debt. I watched inflation grow under their fiscal policies. We've got to get our house in order. So the one thing I will tell you as Republicans, we will always protect Medicare and Social Security. We will protect that for the next generation going forward. But we are going to scrutinize every single dollar spent. It's the right, it's the hardworking taxpayer that actually pays it. And we want to make sure it's spent wisely and not the way the Democrats have spent. Julie Rubner, you heard the Republican leader, Kevin McCarthy, there say they're going to protect these two programs. Yet we've heard from viewers oh, since the beginning of the 118th Congress that some Republicans want any vote on the debt limit, increasing that debt limit, to include cuts to these entitlement programs. Is that true? Uh, yes. <laughs> the, Kevin McCarthy has very carefully uh, sort of reiterated the one thing that the Republicans agree on when it comes to Social Security and Medicare is that they don't want to be seen as doing anything to harm those programs. But there are an awful lot of Republicans, some in the House and some in the Senate, uh, who would like to make some very big uh, and probably very controversial changes uh, as part of an effort to, as Kevin McCarthy says, reduce spending, control the budget, and preserve the programs, which, are, which do need to be uh, at least tinkered with if they are to withstand and the, uh, uh, the retirement of future generations. What is the status of each of these programs, their, their fiscal fate? So Social Security, according to the last trustees report in 2022, uh, is projected to exhaust its trust fund in 2035. So there's some time to deal with that. The Medicare uh, trust fund is not scheduled to be exhausted in, uh, until 2028. That's actually longer than uh, it was either last year. And over the many years, um, that's actually more years than the Medicare trust fund usually has. So there is some time to deal with both of these issues. But Congress, at some point, is going to have to grapple with them. How much federal spending goes to each of the programs, Medicare and Social Security? 
um, I, don't, I don't have the, the actual statistic, but it is a large chunk of the federal budget, and it is what we call mandatory spending. Um, uh, the speaker was talking about discretionary spending that, that went up under the Democrats, but Social Security and Medicare and Medicaid, to some extent, uh, continue unless Congress uh, steps in to change them, unlike other programs that have to be renewed every year uh, and appropriated for every year. These are programs that don't change unless Congress actually goes in and makes changes to them. So if you want to get the debt under control, can you do it without touching these two programs? Probably not. Um, in fact, almost certainly not, because they are they are such a large chunk of federal spending. Uh, and as I mentioned, something's going to have to be done in order to preserve the programs for future generations. Um, but it's always very controversial to touch either Social Security or Medicare. And as we found out in 2017, when the Republicans were trying to repeal the Affordable Care Act, people are sensitive about cutting Medicaid as well, because now so many more people are on Medicaid than on Medicare. We have traditionally called these programs the third rail of politics, touch them and die. Um, uh, President George W. Bush, uh, in his second term, proposed a, a fairly minor program to privatize, to partly privatize Social Security, and basically got his head handed to him. And Republicans have sort of shied away from that ever since. So it is politically very risky uh, to go after these programs. On the other hand, at some point, the parties are going to have to get together and do something. Republican David Schweikert uh, on the House floor last week explained how entitlement programs like Medicare and Social Security are the primer, primary drivers of the national debt. Take a listen. The majority, the vast majority of U.S. spending is what we call mandatory. It's entitlements. It's you get because you work so many quarters it's because you turned a certain age, because you're a certain tribal group, because you're a certain level of poverty. You get these benefits, and they're automatic. It's a formula. And then over here, you see this little green part? That's discretionary. That's what we call non-defense discretionary. This is what everyone thinks of as government. That's your foreign aid. That's your FBI. That's the IRS. That's all those things. And here, the blue. That's defense. And you're going to see, I'm going to show you in some charts later, you know, my brothers and sisters on the left will throw off and throw out rhetoric of, cut it, defense, get rid of it. Believe it or not, it's not even enough money to keep us in balance. You can get rid of every dime of defense. There needs to be an understanding of reality. Your government is an insurance company with an army. And I know that sounds uh, trying to be somewhat humorous, but it happens to be the truth. Julie Robner, insurance company with an army. Um, that's a pretty good description. <laughs> In many ways, that's true. I mean, that was a completely accurate description of how mandatory spending works, how our entitlements work, um, that if you qualify, you automatically get these. Uh, if Congress wants to go in and change them and the president agrees, they can do that. That's what happens in most of these you know, budget reconciliation bills. That's what budget reconciliation bills are for. They're for Congress to basically make changes to the non- discretionary part of the budget, which, as Congressman points out, is the largest part of the budget. So we've seen many, many changes to both Medicare and Social Security over the years. Most of them have been relatively small. Some of them have been fairly significant. In 2003, it was the Republicans who passed the bill to put a prescription drug benefit into Medicare and didn't pay for it. So that was something that added to the deficit. Um, so both parties are kind of guilty for laying things on that have made these programs more expensive and or more generous. Before we get to calls, Julie Runner, are there bipartisan proposals for uh, adjusting these programs so that they can remain solvent? Um, Probably not in Congress. Nobody wants to sort of step out first. There are a lot of bipartisan proposals on the outside. There are a lot of, you know, we've had 
I don't know how many commissions my uh, bookcase behind my head is littered with reports of these commissions who have, you know, tried to come up with ways to to shore up the programs in a fair way that doesn't hurt people who are uh, getting the programs now, who preserves them for future generations. But Congress has been kind of loath. As I said, it's politically very risky to tinker with these programs too much. So I think that this is probably not going to be the Congress where we're going to see, you know, the, the Republicans and the Democrats hold hands and jump. What are some of these bipartisan proposals by outside groups, by commissions, as you talked about? Well, one of the, the quick ones is to take the cap off of the Social Security tax. Right now, um, you only pay Social Security tax up to, I think it's $147,000 of income. Obviously, there are a lot of people who make more than that, and they don't pay their Social Security tax on anything above that. The reason for that is that they want the benefits to be sort of balanced with how much you paid in. That's why there is a cap. But obviously, taking the cap off, people can probably afford that. Um, that would be one quick way to bring a fair bit of money into the uh, Social Security program. Yeah, so that uh, that one way there is where Republicans and Democrats both kind of want to do that. And that's where the Senator Bernie Sanders plan and a bunch of the Democrats that are in favor of that will actually want to raise the benefits with that and include that extra $2,400 a year. Uh, Republicans have a, want to do that as well. They just don't want to give the extra $2,400 a year. Uh, so we'll see what happens here on that, and I'll keep you up to date here. Uh, next up, we're kind of similarly, we'll talk about, will your Social Security payments stop now that the debt ceiling has been reached? So... Uh, yeah, so this is a big concern here. A lot of people are talking about this. We know that they actually reached the debt ceiling here a few days ago. You can see the U.S. actually reached the debt ceiling on January 19th. The Treasury Department announced on January 19th, Janet Yellen says extraordinary measures have begun to mitigate financial repercussions. But will those measures include pausing Social Security payments? In the past, Congress has avoided this by raising the debt limit, but they haven't done that yet this time. House Republicans say they will not support another increase unless they get spending cuts or other concessions. Uh, NPR uh, reported, which is, I believe, this stands for National Public Radio or something uh, similar to that. Defaulting on the debt would be a first in U.S. history, said the New York Times. And it would force officials to choose between continuing assistance like Social Security and paying interest on the nation's debt. So you can see the problem here. However, House Republicans' payment prioritizations plan would call for the Biden administration to make only the most urgent federal payments if the debt limit is reached. The plan may also specify that the Treasury Department continue making payments on Social Security, Medicare, and veteran benefits, as well as military funding, according to two people aware of internal discussions, as reported by the Washington Post. Quote, we agreed to advance a debt priori prioritization bill through regular order by the end of the first quarter of 2023. A, uh, said Chip Roy from Texas, a leading conservative who helped arrange the deal in a text message to the Post. The White House is relying on bipartisan support to bypass House Republican leadership and raise the debt limit. President Biden has said he refuses to negotiate over the debt limit. The Times and Congress must vote to raise the debt limit with no conditions. The last time the debt ceiling was the last time the U.S. reached the debt ceiling in 2001, it took two months for the economy to recover per NPR. The Treasury found that waiting to raise the limit took a toll on the economy, affected the market, and even people's retirement savings. Now, NPR actually reports here that by, but by the summer, if not sooner, cash from the government itself will not be available to repay bondholders and other creditors for the loans that have already come due if they don't raise the debt limit. 
because they basically can't print any more money or borrow any more money if this is not done. Nor will there be cash to pay the military or the millions of other federal employees or pensioners or beneficiaries of Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, or other entitlement programs or anything. And that's just the payroll, uh, leaving aside the purchases and contract works. That adds up to an awful lot of unpaid and happy people. But that's not the reason defaulting on the debt has historically been regarded as unthinkable. If the U.S. were to actually default, all of those unpaid creditors would be under pressure from their own creditors, setting off reverberations in the credit market worldwide. So basically, Social Security payments, Medicare, Medicaid is okay for now. But as we get closer and closer to what they're saying is like June, then it could become a real issue. And the problem is, is that Congress always waits till the last minute. It seems like not, I don't want to say always, but it seems like always. Um, so this could become a very real issue. I remember that last time around, I think it was like a year and a half ago or something when they raised the debt limit, they raised it like the day of when we were going to reach the debt limit. This time they rate, they, they haven't raised it and we actually passed the debt limit. And now they're basically exhausting the money in their checking accounts, so to speak, the the U S government checking accounts. So we've actually passed the debt limit this time and they didn't raise it. And now they're exhausting the cash on hand which is unbelievable. And they haven't even negotiated yet. The Republicans and Democrats are, the Democrats and President Biden's stance are, we're not going to negotiate, and they haven't even started negotiations. So you guys let me know your thoughts here on this, and I'll keep you up to date. <laughs> uh, yeah, so if you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe down below to our YouTube channel. It's completely free to do so. Now just click the subscribe button and then, then the bell icon so you don't miss out on new videos. They come out here every day at 10 a.m., 3 p.m., and 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Also, thanks so much for hitting the like button and sharing these videos with anybody that needs to hear this information. Here's some videos you can watch next. You can click here to watch my newest video uh, next. And here's some information uh, that's coming to all 50 states from the Fed. So click on one of those videos next. Thanks for watching, guys, and I will see you in the next video.